Hello, Chevelle. Hey there. It's saying quick click twice to maximize video. Oh. Hi, Chevelle. Hey, Lindsay. Look at you. Oh, she says hello, but she was back there. Oh, okay. Well, we right. will I only be able to see, I won't be able to see anybody. Um, it's your, it's, it's at your discretion. We asked people not to share their video unless invited by the presenter. So you, you set the tone. If you want to speak into the void, you can, if you want people to share their screens, you can. Um, I would like them to share their screens. Okay. I will share my screen. And, um, as the blocks pop up, you can like click on which one you want to be big or little or. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get a coffee refill. Okay, dope. Can I get you anything while I'm up? Good? Um, yeah. Can you um bring me um some calmness? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hello. How are you? I'm great. That's good. I'm glad that you're good. Did y'all did y'all have a chance to um be on Mo's um thing? That to do what now? Did you have a chance to to be a part of Mo's keynote? Were you a part of Mo's keynote? I even uh, put in a question. You did? I just, okay. I, I mean, I'm quite sure you did. I just made a comment. <laughs> it was so Yeah, I'm working good. on this uh, roasted squash, and I'm trying to make beet gnocchi, and I'm cooking some lentils, so I've got a lot going on here. You got a lot. Well, that sounds, that sounds delicious, Polly. I eat strange food. What time is dinner, Polly? Uh, that's what I'm like. Um, um, I, I'd like to have some beet gnocchi. Soon. Well, the lentils <laughs> will be soon. The gnocchi will be the evening, but the lentils will be soon. Okay. I love lentils. My spouse loves lentils as well. So I just eat them, you know? Just I put them in everything. I eat tons of them. Do you? Yeah, well, I'm vegetarian, so. Okay. That was, that was my next question. Yeah. If you were vegetarian. I like to say that I'm uh, I'm vegan adjacent. <laughs> Vegan adjacent. I love it. Yeah. So like 98% of the time I'm vegan. But if somebody says, oh, I made this cheese pizza, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. Yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm probably, um, I, I do try some. Oh, it's 11.15. Okay. I do try some of the uh, vegetarian stuff, but I, I'm, a, you know, carnivore. So that's kind of where it is, you know. Hey, we all gotta be our own thing, and we gotta accept the version. That's one of my identities. So we want to go ahead and get um, started now. We want to wait a couple of more seconds, Leo. What are your thoughts? No, we should get started. Okay. All right. 
Greeting everybody. How are you? My name is Chevelle Moss Savage. Um, I have the pleasure of serving on the board of directors for OutCT. I am also the um, uh, chairperson for the education committee, and this is my second term, so I'm excited about that. And so I'm just excited to be here with you all and to share. And um, because I also am a little tech challenge, um, my good friend Leo here is going to be um, man in my PowerPoint. So if you see there are some lags in conversation, then you'll realize what that is, right? I just wanted y'all to know that. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the first slide. All right, so who am I and why am I got in the conversation? So all of these identities I possess, I see the lion because I am a proud graduate of the first degree granting HBCU in the country, Lincoln University. Any Lincoln Lions out there? No, just me. It's all right. I'll rock it for all of us. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I also am a um, Gaga. That's my grandbaby right there being held by my son, um, who I feel is very handsome, but I may be a little biased. So um, I am a wife. I am a sister. I am a dog mom. Um, this is my second year being a dog mom. You see my dog Shiloh is really, really excited about her Halloween costume. She's not. But anyway, um, just the price of being my dog daughter, right? Every once and again, you have to indulge my dress up um, concerns. And then I also am a therapist. I have a practice in downtown London and I support primarily folks who identify as LGBTQ. Um, who also may be black and brown. And then also I support folks who are poly, um, non-monogamous, kink, all of the things that, um, you know, you could be and be great at. And I also have um, a practice, which is healed. So that's right there. And I also am um, a faculty member at Eugene O'Neill, which is a local um, theater conservatory um, here in Waterford, Connecticut. So that's who I am. I am but I'm also at the end of the day, y'all, I am a educator, but I'm also a lifelong learner because I believe in order to um, lead and to, and to educate, you must be in a position that you want to learn, right? From all folks, right? And just not people who you think can teach you. A lot of times you can get the smallest lessons from someone that you interact with at your local grocer. So that's where I am with it. All right, next. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little song too, Leo. You're gonna know when I when I start singing. That'll be that's the cue. All right. So what will we be doing during our time together? So I took this directly from <laughs> my um my workshop description. So nobody will be shocked about what we're gonna talk about. Um, so we're gonna discuss and define your own personal definition of intersectionality. So that's why I wanted to see you all because I want us to talk, have an interactive conversation, share the myriad of identities folks may possess, right? And then analyze how privilege and oppression can get in the way of embracing identities that are different from our own. And then examine the importance of utilizing inclusive language when organizing craft festivals or other programming. Also in my other life, before I started my private practice, I worked as a um, outreach coordinator slash therapist at a, um, at a college counseling center. So I know all the awareness months. I know <laughs> all of the things. There's like national, I didn't know that there was a thing called National Kindness Day. It, it's it's real. Um, they're like all the things that are there and available. I know about them because that's what I um, did when I worked at Virginia State. So, but these are just the things we're going to talk about, but I really want us to really just have like a genuine conversation, right? The, um, the PowerPoint is just for conversation prompts. And also too, because I know how I'm set up, I will like, a net will fly by and all my attention span will be gone. So I'm like, I need this to help me, to help y'all, to help me, to help y'all, okay? So <laughs> that's where we are. All right, next. All right, now you know we gotta have some housekeeping stuff, right? That's just how it is, how it's set up. So this is a safer space. So when I say safer, I mean, because a lot of times people say, well, you know, and when I've, actually done a lot of um, uh, talks or facilitated conversations, you know, folks will say, well, this is a safe space. And they can say what, and they, they sometimes think that gives them carte blanche to say whatever they want to anyone and how they say it. And I'm like, you could hurt someone. So no space is ever truly safe. It's a safer space. So that's why I like to give that caveat. And then 
all questions and comments are welcome, right? Let's just make sure that we re we are respectful when addressing others and sharing our thoughts because you don't know what anybody's journey is, right? And then one diva, one diva, one mic. Listen, we can all sing together, but we not in church. So let's all, all let's all talk only one at a time, all right? And other than that, I think we're gonna have us a good old time. And also too, y'all, I'm not from here. I'm new, I'm originally from Virginia. So you may hear my accent come in and out. I don't think I have an accent, but I'm told by these Northern people that I do. I don't know, but it's all right. Let's move on. All right. So now this is the time when we're going to have us a conversation. So what is intersectionality? What's the first thing you think about when you hear that word? And is it really that important? So now is the time that y'all talk. So, hi, my name is Arielle. Um, when I hear intersectionality, I generally think different ways you, I mean, I guess the ways you identify, um, but like several different categories, depending on, you know, it could be, as we were talking about, you know, your, your dietary restrictions or even your age or your socioeconomic status, as opposed to things that are also, you know, physically, like that people can see about you and how they all come together and make you, you. Very good. Very good. Who else wants to chime in? So um, yesterday in Dr. Washington's workshop, we learned about intersectionality and, uh, and essentially it's it's kind of like the directions and in, in kind of like layers of self. It's mm, like, it's, it's, I like that. It's like your identity and uh, and kind of what's what's what kind of drives you one way or the other pulls you. Yeah, exactly. I'm loving it. Who else wants to chime in? Hi, I'm Donna. Uh, she, her, hers. Yeah, it's just it's who, who it's what makes you different from everyone else. It may, what's um like your your individuality. That's the way I see it. Yeah, actually, absolutely, absolutely, right? Okay. And do y'all think it's really important to to even think about? Uh, intersectional world. Yes. <laughs> I think, it, you know, I, I think of intersectionality almost as like a, a funnel and how I'm like, I'm different than this percentage of the population and in, in this way and then in this way. And it gets like so small and granular and uh, which is not exactly a positive. So it is important that we like kind of figure out what to do with it. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Figure out what to do with it. You know, because it came onto the scene. What about maybe? Well, it's actually it's been here for years. Right. And when we think about Audre Lorde and and that intersection around like, you know, queer identities and women and things of that nature and that how um, that really those particular spaces weren't um, welcoming for her. Right. And like white queer spaces and that kind of like that's why we needed to, we came up with like womanist theory and things of that nature instead of um feminist theory you know or or as another way of, of thinking of things so it's been around for a long time but i think more so it's just like um like it became the buzzword maybe maybe about 10 years ago i think maybe 10 15 years ago um and why do you think that is well we know y'all know who who coined the word intersectionality right Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw is a black woman who actually came up with that. You should look at, um, she has this wonderful TED talk that breaks it down. And I'm like, she's just awesome. I was like, listen, I could just listen to her talk all day. But anyway, so yeah, that's an option. Okay. All right. Thanks, um, Cam. Cam said, sorry, cameras have an issue. And no, but I just answered. All right. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. All right, so this is the time where y'all can name some identities. And then after y'all name them, right, then we're gonna kind of figure out if all of them have been met. And I mean, and they're, they're like a myriad of identities. So let's think about, so let's go ahead. And if you wanna also put in the chat, right? If you are not on camera, don't feel comfortable being on camera, uh, feel free to put um, your answers in the chat as well. So let's think about some identities. Alicia. I love it. I love the raise hand. <laughs> I just I, listen. It's the educator in me. Um, <laughs> I would say your gender identity, mm -hmm. how you see your own gender. Mm -hmm. Exactly, gender identity. Okay. 
What else? Go, oh, Tracy. Go. Yeah, listen, y'all, just go ahead and jump in. If nobody else is talking, jump in. Because I'm, I'm taking notes. So sometimes, I mean, I see you. <laughs> I was saying race. Race, yeah. Okay. Sexual orientation. Okay, sexual orientation, yeah. Uh, physical ability. Physical ability. I'm going to say religion. Okay, religion. Tommy in the chat added race, gender identity, income, education. Okay. Ancestry, where are you from? Uh-huh. Exactly. Age. Someone had wanted to say something? I missed it. I said age. Age. Yeah. We think we covered them all? <laughs> of course not. I mean, we talked earlier about uh, vegetarianism, you know, your diet. Mm hmm. Physical size uh -huh. and presence. Mm hmm. Whether you have kids or don't have kids, mm -hmm. whether you're single or single or partnered. Mm hmm. So identities are just like um, when it comes to when we think about the LGBTQIA plus community, right? Like it is ever flowing. It is fluid. It is something that is not um, static. It is just always evolving. And so just like terminology is always evolving, right? Like at one point in time, like three years ago, I could say something and it was totally fine and acceptable. But now if I were to say it, it's considered pejorative, right? So, you know, it all depends on where you are, your region, where you, where you, um, who you are connected with. Um, who your um, community group is and all of that. So let's um, go with, so Leo, go ahead and hit the little button. Boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spiritual. Somebody said religion. Yes. Boom. Intellectual, right? Boom. LGBTQIA plus, because it's a lot of pluses. Go ahead. Boom. Ability status. Boom. Racial. Yes. Ethnic cultural, gender or gender identity, socioeconomic status, and immigration status. I didn't hear anybody mention that. Mm. Isn't that something, right? A lot of times when it's, you know, you mention what's important to you and what affects you immediately. That's just kind of how it is sometimes, right? So that's real. Um, so I think everything, physical ability, religion. So everything that y'all said, pretty much, I also stated. Besides like, um, when it comes to like um, dietary, right? Um, restrictions like, or or not even restrictions, but dietary choices. Like this is, this is what I need to do to make my body do what it needs to do. And so this is where I am. So that's something that, that definitely is new within the last, well, I won't say new because nothing is new, right? <laughs> it's just that we're giving it more attention. Why do you think that is? So like, how does that work? Like, you know, like all of these things have been around for years and years and years and years and years, but now it's something that we're paying attention to. Why do you think that is y'all? I think it might be in order to try to be more accommodating, just so if you know mm. there are different things that people have to, you know, be aware of, you can try to include more people or be aware of that or, Try, try to be more inclusive, I guess. Absolutely. I agree with that, Ariel, because I think definitely um, I'll use something very simple as an example. Like, well, now when I um, have dinner parties, I'm asking people, like, do you eat, you know, what do you eat? Do you eat pork? Do you eat cheese? You know, um, are you gluten free? And I'm, I'm conscious and cognizant of that, right? Whereas in my big mama back in the day, listen, it was one meal. Look. <laughs> And you ate that or you fasted for purification. Look, that's just, that's just how it was. So there, there was, my big mama and them didn't have any accommodations, right? She wasn't like, well, let's see. You don't, well, I don't eat, I don't eat meat, big mama. Okay, well, go ahead and have these greens. But they got meat in them. 
it's all right, ma'am. No, I don't. <laughs> so, I mean, even when we talk about like cultural components, right. And then like the, the, the generations, like, you know, at one point in time, you know, like my big mom and them may or may not have taken into consideration someone's, um, you know, dietary um, restraints and, make, and try to make sure that they felt included. However, me, when I am entertaining, I'm making sure like, you know, what do you, you know, do you do dairy and things of that nature? And that I may have something separate for, or maybe have like gluten-free pasta if I'm making a pasta dish, you know, something like that. But it is exactly what you said, Ariel, just trying to actually be more included, inclusive in that, which Oh, Cam says, let's, I'm gonna go to the chat too, y'all. Cam says, we're New Yorkers and may look at immigration differently. Expand on that, Cam. What do you mean? Also, um, I just want to take a second. Cam earlier was having trouble sharing your audio and physio. Are you, are you okay? Do you, there should be a blue button. Are you all right? Oh, it might be because we're maxed out of nine people on screen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. For the recording reasons it, it maxes out at a certain amount of people on screen okay well can but so cam can't even share like talk no they they i think they're regularly relegated to the chat section i'm sorry that oh, you were too okay okay well all right well feel free cam to jump in and tell us what you mean by that um so we're happy to discuss it um or chat well, with i think more a, about a lot of a lot of what's changed has to do with communication with the fact that we're um, we're at a point now where we know more people outside of our own little circles, we're exposed to more differences uh, mm -hmm. rather than living in a bubble. We tend to be more uh, intercultural, and so we mm -hmm. see these things which we had no idea about. My, my mother's generation, my mother's ninety. I mean, so many things that are happening now. She just like, I had no idea any of that even existed. And that's. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I, I missed your last part, part that you said, Polly. Saying that people didn't didn't know these these differences existed. And now that yeah. they're learning that they exist, then we can be more open and understanding. Okay. There's Cam. Hey, hey, Cam, how you doing? <laughs> I, I'm, I was feeling left out. Now I'm able to join. Thank you. Lou. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you're able to join. Um, but I also agree with what Polly said. So in, in the same, same vein, like as New Yorkers, we do interact with a, a multitude of people. So like, I don't pay attention to, you know, someone's immigration status. I also work in healthcare. So, and I work for a, a public health healthcare. So, Immigration doesn't mean anything because everyone can get treated regardless of their immigration status. Gotcha. So as New Yorkers, you know, you, you, it's it's a it's definitely a melting pot. And, you know, we we have I have personally have friends from everywhere. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I hear you. But also that's the thing to think about. I hear you it was more so like, um, well, you know, I really don't have to. Think, I don't really don't think about that because you know I'm constantly surrounded by folks, but you know there are also folks whose immigration status is extremely um, important to them because there could be a situation where they could be deported based on any kind of situation. I don't have to personally worry about that, but I know I have people in my caseload who it is a constant issue, a constant battle. They live in constant fear, constant regret, of wondering will this be the moment that something will happen they will be outed. You get what I'm saying? So even just even us looking at it differently, I understand that we definitely should treat folks in a way in which we want to be treated. And also like everyone, like you said, Cam, you work in a healthcare system. So everybody is going to be treated no matter what your status, what your social economic status, your ability status, things of that nature. But I think if, if we just delve down a little bit deeper and look into like what that looks like in an identity that we don't possess, like, you know, having someone who um, is navigating you know, if they're going to see their parents based on being profiled, right? Like what that looks like. So, you know, so those are just some things and I won't, we won't get bogged down into that. Um, <laughs> Y'all so sweet. Uh, let me know so we can swap in and out. <laughs> just so nice. <laughs> I just love it. I just love it. 
<laughs> You're like, we all want to be on camera at one point. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. You have no idea. <laughs> all right. So let's go to the next slide. Thank you, Leo. So why should we even consider like all the identities? Like I've kind of touched on a little bit, but like, why is that even important when we're trying to organize events, right? Why is, why is that necessary when we're trying to organize pride events or, um, or even other, um, any type of um, event outside of pride? I think for safety, because when, mm. it, cause, because when it comes to intersectionality and all that, I feel like the, the, it's always about which thing in my, in my, do I feel scared about like getting mm -hmm. know, discovered or attacked or what, like, what's my biggest, my, my first thing that I'm worried about, like you were talking about immigration and, and immigration status, because that's like their, that's the thing that they're most concerned about. That's their biggest risk. So. So if we're trying to create a welcoming space, if some somebody's not going to feel welcome if their if their first thing is a risk, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. when, like in my intersectionality, if I'm going to a big event and like the bathroom situation is rough and like I'm worried about physical safety because part of my identities are like a handicap and gender identity. So if those first things are freaking me out, then I'm not feeling super welcome there. Exactly. 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 Alicia says, I think on a bigger level, we need to consider our other identities to save lives. Exactly. Um, but, you know, Alicia, that's pretty much what Leo just said. And I believe that as well. It's just like when at, at Pride events, um, do you have police presence there? Do you think that's important? Hey, Edwin. <laughs> Jump in real quick and mention, um, I'm Puerto Rican, and when I was growing up young, my parents only talked to me in Spanish, but mm. um, I felt like it was really important for me to learn English and talk English as proper as possible so I can blend in a lot better. Wow. And uh, that's one of the things with immigration nowadays, like people are worried they're going to be uh, getting their green card checked and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. country if they, you know, talk a different way. So, you know, even the way you talk is one of the big things. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Edward. So a lot of times, you know, when, when I talk, when I um, interact with folks who this country is not their, their, they immigrated or either their parents immigrated, I hear a lot of assimilation. And it's just what, like what Edwin said, it's not at the point that you're not proud of your heritage or your culture, but it's the point of, I just need to blend in because I don't want to make a, a scene or make it a big deal because then I may get targeted, right? And so that's in the same situations like with, with Black people and, and like I asked about the police presence, right? Black and brown folks, in case y'all ain't figured out, we don't really have a good history with police, right? And that goes all the way back to when there were like slave patrols, right? And they were the enforcers of what of what that is. And then we can go into history around how police have been with black and brown people, but that's not the time for us to do that. That's a different conversation um, that we can have. But I mean, think about that when you're creating pride events, like what that may look like. Um, and, and will black and brown people feel safe with people who are in uniform, right? So even if you are thinking of maybe having police there just for a level of protection, for whatever reason, because, you know, I don't know your history, I don't know your story, I don't know your private um, events or organizations, maybe think about maybe having them there and playing clothes where it is not so intimidating, right? It is not so triggering. It is not so activating because unless you are a, a person with that identity, you can't understand what someone who has that identity navigates through, right? And anxiety is real. And anxiety will have you doing stuff that you don't even realize that you're, you're like, why did I just punch this person in the face? Because I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I'm being, of course, on the far extreme, but that's real. Um, Polly, you're correct. We go back and forth on whether half the police that pride is good or bad. Um, so, and thank you. So what about other intersecting identities? Why should, why do you think those are important? And integrating those. It gets some, uh, it, it, it focuses on the development of culture, of mm -hmm. the culture of the world, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like mixing new colors, making new pigments of life. Mm -hmm. We're not one dimensional beings, y'all. You know, when I jumped on and I said all of, you know, all of the identities that I possess, a mom, a gaga, you know, um, a therapist, an educator, 
um, a sister, a wife. I, I'm like, I have all of those identities. Some are more important to me than others. Um, mind you, if you notice, I'd have mentioned me being black and me being a woman, but at the end of the day, right. And I mean, I'm a cis woman, right. So I'm a cisgender femme queer person. So when I walk into the room, the first thing that you see is, um, a big black woman based on the Eurocentric um, definition of the size that you should be in this country. But we're not going to talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> at the end of the day, that's what you see. Now, because I am fem presenting, unless I share with you that I am married to a woman, you may not realize it, especially because my partner has a masculine name, right? So uh, when I first got up here, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not from here, y'all. I'm from um, Virginia. When I first got here, um, I would come into contact with people and they will, I was like, oh, how, they said, how did you get here? She, well, I was like, oh, my partner, I mean, not, I didn't say partner. I said, my spouse, um, got a job at Connecticut college. And so we migrated up here. Um, and they were like, oh, what does he do? And I was, I was like, I said, well, I said, I don't have a, no, no. What does he do? What does your husband do? I said, well, actually I don't have a husband. I have a spouse, a marital woman. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And, or it's either like over excited. That's great. But, you know, like my best friend is gay. <laughs> or like I have a brother who's such as I'm like, oh, let me ask you a question. I was like, this is not the time. <laughs> this is not the time <laughs> to treat me as gay Google. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> and what did Mo say? Right. Like Mo, I, I just really felt that her keynote was awesome because at the end of the day, it is, it is our work to figure out how we can support folks who don't have the same identities as ours, right? It is not their work to help us help them. That doesn't make any sense. So I think that is the same thing that we should be looking at when we're looking at all of our identities and what that looks like. Like, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation, but like when it comes down to, um, I definitely want to be considered an ally to some of the folks who don't, whose identities I don't possess, but that is not for me to determine because I'm not, I don't identify as trans. So I can't call myself a trans ally. Someone who identifies as trans or non-binary should say, well, I see Chevelle out here doing the work. I see Chevelle putting in the effort. I see Chevelle showing up when it needs to show up. So I consider her an ally. So many people self assign themselves as being an ally. And, and isn't that interesting? And then, or, you know, and like nowadays I was joking, um, I said people would rather be called the worst thing ever than if you call them a racist or classist or whatever, they will go in. Like, I can't believe you said that because that's now something that we are incorporating as a nation. All right, next slide. So let's talk about some of the isms that we have to navigate, right? So what are some of the isms? I've kind of, I've touched on a little bit, but I want y'all to chime in. And feel free to jump in. Um, Donna, you can jump in. That's so cute. Can y'all feel sweet? <laughs> feel free um, to to chime in on the chat too. Racism, sexism. Racism, sexism. Yeah. Ableism. Ableism. Yep. Ageism. Tommy said. Yep. Ageism. Um, what else? And so we can, so alcoholism. alcoholism. Okay. Tell, tell me a little bit more, explain that a little bit more. Well, depending on some of the events that we do have, uh, we, we kind of keep that in mind for, um, uh, our bar scene and whatnot, what that looks like for people in our community. We have an after party at the bar and we're responsible. Uh, we want to make sure that we have, we started a AA group out of our organization mm -hmm. uh, when we were open. So we're looking at all different aspects, not just a Pride Day event, but how can we have a community at large? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like, like that. I like, like that. I love the fact that you said that you that you took something around your community right recognize that this may be a space that is needed and created that so i think that's great so that's why i wanted you to kind of share out a little bit more leo you wanted to say something oh i, I was gonna say that uh yesterday polly and Lindsay had brought up that uh i think it was moderate alcohol abuse affects yeah, up to 25 percent of the lgbt community mm -hmm. so when you're talking about identifying an ism that's it's like when legitimately one quarter of your population exactly 
Exactly. Wow. Thank you, Polly. Capitalism as well. Capitalism. All right, Cam. Mm -hmm. Now, also, too, y'all, we can do a slash on the isms and, and also include phobias. Mm -hmm. So if we want to, you know, we could go there as well. Like when you're thinking about your pride events, like what does that look like to keep people safe, right? That That is also a smart component of intersectional um, intersectionality when you're talking about creating pride. Homophobia, the transphobia. Homophobia, transphobia. I mean, there's anti-Semitism. Exactly. I mean, look at look at look at xenophobia, mm. right? Some of our Asian um, siblings are dealing with that based on some foolishness, you know. So, I mean, think about what that looks like and how you can keep folks who identify, identify as queer and, and Asian, Asian and. and and a, a lot of them, I did not. How can you support them in your pride events? Okay. Next. Welcome, Monica. Hi. I just wanted to jump in. I don't know if I was having some trouble with the audio, but um, colorism is a thing that I come across quite a mm -hmm. bit. And not just within, you know, certain ethnicities, but, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about myself personally, but speaking as a person who is mixed ethnicity and has absolutely white privilege and very light skin. Like, you know, you get people talking to you like, you know, saying some crazy stuff and they assume that you're a white person mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm not cool with that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, colorism definitely is, 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 is prevalent in a lot of, um, black and brown communities. Right. And, um, I definitely, I'm a, a darker skinned person. And so I always joke about that, you know, like dark skinned people came back in style about like 10 years ago. Um, but when I was younger, um, you know, it, that was not the case. It was more so very, very fair skin, um, um, black humans, right? With very um, Eurocentric features. I've always had lips, I've always had hips. And so, but now, like, these are things that are um, envied by folks. They they want injections for these lips. I was like, y'all want appreciative of these two coolers when I was younger, but now y'all want them. And that's something, stop appropriating my culture. Don't do that. But anyway, and then, and then also, too, this high pads. You, that one, I was a big girl. I was thick, but yet and still, now y'all want the high pads. So there we go. Um, some of the things, oh, Alicia in um, chat says representation matters. Hey, listen. I always say representation matters. Representation is important because representation definitely is indicative of your community. So just like Mo said, if you have people who are majority white in your pride and you're wondering why you don't have POC interaction, let's do some internalized work around that and what that means, right? Now look at my stick person. Look at all of the things that my stick person has. Now you tell me your pride events and your, and your um, events that you have, Will it meet each one of these identities in this person? If the answer is no, why? You can hear crickets. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading, I'm taking it all in. I'm, <laughs> this is like a really great, like objective, like matrix of did, is it mm -hmm. acknowledged and that we all we and everyone has joined in and said like i've been writing down all the stuff that y'all have shared and this pretty much names it even in the chat even in in, in person i love it so when i found this go ahead cam i'm sorry i'm sorry so heritage and history are you referring to you know people's heritage and history or your actual pride's heritage and history I think I was referring to people, but I mean, we can listen. We we can also talk about like pride. Like, why why was your pride created? Like for OCT, the pride came into into play in 2013, right, Leo? I believe so. Yeah, 2013, because it was like a um the founder did like a needs assessment to see if we could actually um handle a pride and we could facilitate one. And the answer was yes. And we've been going strong ever since and do so many other things than pride but like each and, and i'm gonna be honest with you it would be great 
if every pride organization was able to hit on each one of these things and say, yes, we address this in our pride, we address this in our programming. Because like LCT also hosts the pride, but we also do other programming as well. So that may be the case for y'all, for your pride organizations. Like the pride is one of the things that you do, but you also do other aspects of programming. And if so, are you hitting on these things, right? Are you thinking about immigration status when you're planning your events? Are you thinking about ethnicity? Are you thinking about ability status? Are you thinking about sexuality, occupation, age, socioeconomic status, right? Like when it comes down to um, maybe if there's a cost for something, do you have where someone can get a scholarship and not have to worry about that? right? When you're doing your terminology, what does that look like? When you are addressing people, are you saying good evening, guys? That's gender. Are you saying good evening, folks? So something as small as changing your language use, right? Um, whenever, I, whenever I address folks, I say greetings all or greetings colleagues or, or whatever, but I never, or folks, F-O-L-X, right? to make sure that we're talking about the continuum. When we're talking about women, are we talking about like, are you including all identities of women, right? Are you also including trans women? Are you also including trans men? What does that look like? When you're when you're addressing people, do you say, do you give an option of Mr. and Mrs. or mix, MX, which is like kind of like a gender neutral, um, you know, salutation, like, are we doing that? Something as small as those things. Um, one of the things we're, that when I, um, when I was talking to um, um, our, what is it? The people that see you when you're sick. Student oh. Health Center. There we go. <laughs> I was talking to the Student Health Center and I said, and they were like, well, you know, we're really having problems with reaching um, our members of the LGBTQ community when it comes to um, their health. I said, well, what is your, how does your, your um, waiting room look? Is it, does it make me look like, make me think I want to share who, some of my identities when I come in? Or is it very heteronormative, right? Um, the, what does that look like? So, um, oh, okay. Couldn't access through the app. Sorry to be tardy to the party. All right, Cheryl, at least you're here, honey. Welcome. Look. <laughs> All right. So with that, do y'all, nobody's answered me. I was kind of talking, giving y'all some chance to kind of like take it all in. Does your does your pride organization or does your programming that you do or the programming that you hope to do if you're not doing it, does it actually incorporate these things? I think this is a good mix of identities. What do y'all think? And is anything, is my stick person missing anything? I just think this this forms like the really great basis to do like a critical analysis of your programming and like a, a good like long form like Mm -hmm. in in like introspective way it's hard for me to answer it off the cuff to be honest i mean obviously my heart and intention has always been behind everything i see here but mm -hmm. i would i would I, I think it'd be to everybody's benefit to to like critically apply this okay but also to y'all you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel and it's just not up to you this is when you have you're just not playing an event by yourself so like maybe we do some of these parts better than others. Okay, Tom, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so I think some components is that maybe, all right, and don't and don't pigeonhole because when I work in a counseling center, like all of the other therapists sent me all of the students who identified as LGBTQ. And they said, well, I didn't feel comfortable. Listen, you're a generalist, so you should be able to see anybody. And you should leave your stuff at the door, right? Leave your stuff that you have at the door and do your job. But that's, I don't want you to pigeonhole people like, um, like I shouldn't be playing all the, all the black and brown events, right? Because I'm black and brown. <laughs> I shouldn't be playing all the cis women events or femme events because I'm cis and femme. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, and they're like, well, that's that's an easy, no. Now, magic representation is important and, and, and they need to see folks up front and out there, but also too, it shouldn't be as a checkbox, right? You should be doing this because you want to, because you want to be inclusive, all right? So let's move on. Y'all can think about that a little bit more. So embracing intersecting identity is something that's gonna be difficult. Why is that? We don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. I love that answer. I'll tell you a story for me. I'm an adult okay. advisor for, for a youth group. And hey, is he smoking? Whoops. Someone's on a phone call. 
Um, Cam, we can hear you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I thought it was on mute. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Um, I, I'm a youth advisor. I, I was at I'm one sorry, of our, our quarterly okay. events. Let me hear you, Pat. Can you mute her? Uh, yeah, everybody, you can just click on it. Yeah, you can talk to me? You can yeah, mute me anybody me. you want at any time in your Oh, I can? Okay. I didn't know that. Yep. All right. Can you hear me now? Go ahead, Cam. I got you. Go ahead and talk to you. I don't muted you. Yes, go ahead. You're good. <laughs> you I'm sorry, you? Tracy. Go ahead. No, that's not a problem. Um, there's still something in the background, but about five years ago, maybe a little okay. bit more, no, I, uh, I was at a youth event and the adult advisors are separate from the kids and we do things together then we separate. And um, just as you're talking so today, I totally appreciate I this. I said to the girl across the table, I, I don't see you as a person of color. I see your issue. And we didn't have time to continue it. And, and she flipped out on me and I didn't understand. And we never even had a chance to even go back. And um, at, at our youth group, we say, ooch, um, ouch, oops. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. I hurt somebody's feelings, we can talk about it. Because I said, okay. I know I did something wrong. Because I was like, oh, so now when I'm at events sometimes, yeah, I'm like, okay, it is what I'm going to say wrong, wrong. Or how's that person going to take Close. it? But I love the fact that, you know, in our community, that we can have these open dialogues. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when we say that ouch, oops, from our youth group, and I try and bring okay. that. Thank you. Uh, well, how did I offend you? Please, right. please. And I, I know our last talk. The last hour, someone said, well, I shouldn't have to educate you. Well, sometimes I need to be educated, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes I worry about how that person's, you know, I, I've gotten better with that, thank God. Um, but I wonder how people are going to respond or have that dialogue. So sometimes I step back because of that. Mm -hmm. So I think the difference between education and me telling you what you did to hurt me in the moment is different. Right. Education is I need you to I need you to tell me how to fix it all the time. Like if you did something to hurt my feelings old Tracy, when you say you don't see me, my color, you see my issue. That means that you don't see all of who I am because all of who I am is in this color and in this body. I can't rub that off. So that's the thing. And so that's why I actually there's a play on words when I say, by the way, I don't see right. your I don't see gender. I don't see sexual orientation. I just see people because so many times I've heard that. That's that's yeah. of the mindset of the tolerant. Like um, when we talk about in some faith sure systems, right? And I'm not going to say all, but in some faith systems, okay. like love the love the sin or hate the <laughs> sin. Uh, uh that's foolishness. Look, <laughs> okay. but you know, but that's go. that's kind of in right. that mindset. So go ahead, Leo, to the second part. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna understand the name oppression. Right. Thanks. Right, and then. Bye. Identify, recognize privilege. Let me tell you something. Everybody on this call, you you back with us, Cam? You back? Can I can I take your punishment? All right. Yes. <laughs> you are punishment now. Okay, you back. Sorry. <laughs> um, but every one of us here has a, has privilege, whether we recognize it or not. Right now, some has more, have more privilege than others, and that. And that's something that we can talk about. But I think a lot of times our privilege gets in the way of us understanding the importance of the intersectional identities of us, right? And what that looks like. So I think a lot of times when we cannot understand and name the oppression that we may be actually um, imparting on someone else, that's the thing. And then identifying and recognizing the privilege. Like with the whole recent situation, I had a really good conversation with um, a very dear friend of mine who identifies as South Asian. And I wanted to check on her. I was like, listen, sis, how are you doing? You know, with all of we have going on and, and, you know, you guys being targeted. Right. And she said, did y'all catch that? What did I say? You said you were with your friend. No. Mm -hmm. What did I say? What was the other word I said? Being targeted. Targeted. Yeah. No. You there you go. Come on. <laughs> who who said you guys? Who said you guys? Cam. There you go, Cam. That's I, it. See? I Look, I did it too. That's what I'm talking about. So you got to get your get your, your your ear tuned up. Look, because <laughs> I was waiting for y'all to be like, wait a minute, Shaver, you said you guys. Ain't nobody say nothing. Look, <laughs> but I also believe that y'all also probably y'all like, oh, she ain't mean it. Giving her some grace. I appreciate that too. Right. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, you know, like I, I had a conversation where we talked about, we, we really had a really good conversation around um, like cross racial solidarity and what that looks like. So even understanding that some of 
um, black and brown people have some of the same oppressions that have been caused against them, right? That that is sometimes used to, to keep us apart instead of bring us and unify us. Um, please mute if you're not talking as there is a lot of it. You know what? I love it, Alan. I'm just gonna let you guys know that anybody can mute anybody. It doesn't mute it for the crowd. It just mutes it for you. So you are you're in control of your experience. So so what you're trying to say, they can mute me and they didn't want to hear what I had to say? Uh, they sure could. I wouldn't encourage <laughs> it, but they, it is within their ability. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen, you have your own agency around your muting, right? Yep. <laughs> so anyway, so we need to identify and recognize privilege, just like Mo said in the keynote, check your privilege at the door, right? When you're trying to be there, check your privilege. We all got privilege. I got privilege, right? I, I definitely know I have privilege, right? I don't have to worry about going into the into the kitchen and wondering if I have anything to eat, right? I'm not fuel insecure. I'm not water insecure, right? I also am, have a degree. That's a level of privilege that a lot of folks don't 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 possess, right? I, I have that. So there, I have privilege. I do, but I also have things that people um, have more privilege than I do. But we're not going to get into oppression Olympics because sometimes we can get into that as well. You think you had it bad. Well, remember, and you probably don't even, you probably don't even register this as oppression Olympics. But like, you know, you would um, hear like some of your elders when you were younger saying, I had y'all, y'all young people got it easy. When I was young, I had to walk to school in six feet of snow with no shoes on. And you like. Big Daddy, you had to do that, but okay. Look, <laughs> so, you know, so anyway, we, we think about it with, with that. Let's go to the next one. Nope. So what oh, What happened? Hold on. Okay. Got it. All right, sorry. I thought I did a thing. It's okay. It's all right. So, like, what can you do as a pride organizer? That's okay. You ain't got to figure it out. We're going we gonna to do an exercise. Let's move to the next one. You can perform that nice critical analysis presented to the <laughs> figure. I'm telling you, I, I want to do it. Make a spreadsheet. Be great. Let's go to the next one. So this is practice time. So um, how are we going to form them into small groups, um, Leo? We we can. It, it, I feel like it'll be um, just a little distracting and lose some time. I mean, because we can like make little side meetings with each other, but I, I feel like okay. we might lose some right. time in the technology. So this right here, I want you to, let's do this. Then let's do it all on our own. We'll take about three minutes. It shouldn't take long. Devise a scenario that you may encounter regarding multiple identities and discuss your action plan to show an example of your intersexual language use as a proud organizer. And I'll leave it up so that y'all can look at it. So think of a think of a scenario. It could be something that actually is real or something that is fabricated. But I want you to think of that and then I want you to be prepared to share out. Because we all learn from each other. Let's see. Any questions around the assignment? So we're we're thinking of like a, a, a situation of like a per, of a particular intersectionality and how our language would address that intersection. Mm -hmm. Using inclusive language, like and like using language that is intersectional. Think about the sick person, right, and what that looks like, and all of those identities. And then when you are thinking of a scenario, then you kind of put that in and where you can actually use intersectional, intersectional language. I remember I gave an example. Y'all remember the example I gave? You can't use that, just FYI, okay? Look, <laughs> you can't use the greetings all, greetings folks. You can't use that. But that's an example of a scenario I'm talking about. So it doesn't have to be anything like grandiose, y'all. It doesn't. I'm not asking you to like put, you know, do a dissertation. I'm not asking you I got um, it. I got to, you know, like put it in APA format. I'm not asking any of that. I'm just asking you <laughs> to do something just really basic. And then I want you to share out. I got it. And Phil and the people who are in the chat, you know, jump in as well. Ariel keeps our team honest. <laughs> mm. Okay. Let's see, it's coming in, y'all. It's coming in. Yes. I love it. I love it. Stop looking at the chat. You can't take those ideas. They already said them. So y'all should have put them in quick. <laughs>
Okay. Yep, it sure would, Ariel. Yep. Mm. I'm calling back I would advertise secure Ariel. and accessible facilities. Good job, Leo. I can share a real experience. We would love for you to do that, Alan. Descriptive language around photos. Yes. Have you noticed that has been going on, right? Everybody learns differently. Everybody processes information differently. We remove gender-specific labels on bathrooms. Excellent, Polly. That is, these are all low-hanging fruit things, y'all, right? I, I'll let I, you know, Alan. I would like Open ingredients are very important. That's true. Leo? Oh, I, uh, in terms of bathroom signs, um, in particular, a lot of times they'll do, you know, people want to be inclusive and they'll make that inclusivity like some weird alien monster thing. And yeah. I'm say that almost, it makes me feel the opposite way. I'm like, I'm not a, I, I'm not a weird exactly. one. So at our pride, that's why the bathrooms are labeled human bathrooms. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very accessible language. Social media, Twitter, Ariel, make sure we put all text in our messaging. Yes. What do you mean by that? Um, do you want to explain that, Ariel? I mean, Cam. So, uh, on Twitter, you have uh, a alt text option. So when you put a post, like say you put an image, and it you could click on the alt text and it breaks it down. Um, Ariel, you're kind of better at this than I am. Is she on? I don't know. Oh, Alan had a story, though. Okay, yeah. Alan, go ahead with your story while we're waiting for Ariel to jump in or either put it in the... Put oh, it no, in. I, it's easier to say it than write all that stuff. Um, okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, and, that, and the feedback would be great. Um, a couple of years ago, I was one of the March leaders at the New York City Pride March, mm -hmm. and there was an altercation with a spectator who was unhappy with representation in the march, and this individual presented themselves as a trans individual and they had they had a sign identifying themselves as such and they were really upset and they were threatening to lay down in the middle of the street and stop the whole march if they weren't heard mm -hmm. and the police were being very aggressive and i thought to myself this is not the right way to handle this because this individual just wants to be heard and so I, since i was for good or for bad the only person in a leadership position in close proximity, I immediately ran over and I said to the police officer, please let me try to assist this based on the training that I had had. So the first thing I did was identify myself to the person. I told them my name and I used pronouns. You know, I says, hi, mm -hmm. this is my role. This is my name and my pronouns are he, him, is. Please tell me what's your name. And this individual immediately gave me their name and their pronouns. So I knew right away, okay, yeah. I know how to, move into this conversation and then i just said to them tell me what's going on i didn't see what happened you're really upset and they saw that i had a leadership t-shirt on and i said just tell me i don't pretend i know just tell me your side what's going on and the fact that that this individual was able to express themselves and tell me they actually felt heard and i took a very subordinate physical role you know my my body language was mm -hmm. very non aggressive and mm -hmm. non-authoritarian. I purposely wanted this person to feel that they were in control and they were being heard and they were the the power holder in this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. that was the energy that I was putting out. And, and at the end of the conversation, I listened and I said to this, to this individual, okay, I hear you, but I can't do what you want I can't stop the parade. Is there another option I can give you? Tell me what else would make you feel satisfied and heard. Because mm -hmm. we can't we can't stop the march. It's it's not an option, but what you're saying is valid. So give me another option. And they thought, and then they said to me, Well, I'm gonna write something down on a card and I want you to go up to the announcer stage and have this read. And if you do that, then I'll feel heard. And I thought, you know what? that's easy. Mm -hmm. And I looked at them and I said, we're going to do that. And so they wrote down a card. I went up on stage. I pulled my, you know, as Mo always says, use your privilege. <laughs> In this case, I had privilege. 
I took the index card, gave it to the announcer, and the announcer read what the person wanted to have their voice heard. And the person was, was so happy, and they went back into the crowd, and there was no arrests, and the march didn't stop, and the situation was completely resolved. And I, I just thank, thank you know, my training that it was mm-hmm. acknowledge the person who's there. Look at all the components of who they are. Like you said, don't mm-hmm. discount that the person is a person of color. Don't discount mm-hmm. that this person is a person of trans experience. Mm-hmm. Don't discount that there's a lot of, you know, don't assume this person. You always say, oh, my God, this person is crazy when you see somebody doing something out of the norm. But maybe that's their experience. Maybe that's the only way they know how to be heard, how they got to that in life. You know what I mean? Their mm-hmm. experience is different from mine. So, And I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that because a couple of things that you did, you number one, you you identified all of the intersecting identities that that human had, right? And you, and you, and you validated their experience and their concern by just coming in and, and wanting, allowing them to be heard and using pronouns. Pronouns are important right? Pronoun is a low-hanging fruit, and it is a way that you can affirm someone the easiest way. It also is an act of violence when you don't use the pronoun or when you're dead naming folks, right? So like also something that's using like name tags um, if you're at proud events and actually have someone put their name in, right? And, and allow them to allow them to say what their pronouns are, allow them to have that. I always ask, and I didn't do it today because um, we were chatting, but I always start with, um, and even on my Zoom account, my pronouns are in my name. So, you know, and I ask people if they can rename themselves, to put their pronouns in so that I can make sure that I'm using the proper pronoun so that I'm not misgendering anyone. Right. Um, because that's not my intent. So thank you. Thank you for that, Alan. I really appreciate you sharing that. I do. And and y'all like that. That's an example of number one, de-escalation. That's an example of utilizing intersectional leadership. Right. That's an example of incorporating all those things. Um Yes, please, what Tracy said. So the jaw here, so um, I real pretty much so when, when they talk about alt text, when they, if you notice on your Instagram or even some in, in some social media, you actually can put in like, like say it's a picture of me and it'll say like um, a, a brown person wearing glasses and a red um, sweater with a neck, you know, so it'll break down what you are seeing in the picture. So that's what that is. And so for people who um, perhaps have a visual impairment, that is important, right? When it comes to that. Um, one of the things that I also want to talk about, oh, so has, does anybody else want to share out their, um, their, their scenario? Even in the people in the chat, the chat people have been, y'all been going in. Yeah. I really like the, the, what, um, Tommy and Sherry both brought up things that are a good point. Credentialing yourself, Sherry, that's good too, because then that like it gives people comfort it's kind of like yeah it's it's the uniformed officer but you know without without the uniform much more what a, way. look look with a rainbow with a rainbow shirt to say uh <laughs> organize <Yeah. laughs> why do i know what i'm talking about and how many of us volunteer for so many other people and sometimes we wear that organizer shirt and then go oops i shouldn't be wearing this shirt today <laughs> yeah but you know what i wear that shirt and that means to me that even if I don't know how to solve your problem, it's my job to get you there. Right. Mm. Okay. Very good, Leo. Look May I mention know. yesterday in the um, LGBTQ elders presentation, mm-hmm. they showed a film that was about 13 minutes and it was called, I believe, Not One More Second. Mm-hmm. And there was a woman in there who mentioned that she had more Ajita being a black woman than being a lesbian. Being a lesbian, not much blowback, but more issues around her color than her orientation. And I thought this is the perfect example of intersectionality because what we think is going to be troublesome for folks, to your point, Chevelle, it's about where, where we're growing up and, and the kind of privilege we have and mm-hmm. the the code switching that we've had to do even to mm. get to where we are. Yeah. To protect and I love you brought up code switching because a lot of times people say, oh, you're being fake. No, I'm trying to survive. Because code switching in a lot of ways means that means survival, right? So let's move on to the next one. I know we, we're running out of time. 
I think we've run out of time. Uh, so no, how we start the, is how we end up. You said what? Close, FYI. The door doesn't close. You're welcome to do what you want, but okay how we start and how we end up so look at look at this like and Tr um, sherry just mentioned it like the beginning like first socialization like what does that look like for us right um all of these things it's like a continuum that's how we we form you know you've seen these new posts where racism is taught you know it's learned it's not inherently in us or whatever so i mean people have different thoughts around that like you know nature versus nurture and what that looks like um, but this is definitely is, I think, a good um, depiction of um, how we form our opinions, how we form what we believe, how we form, form our culture. Culture is our lived experience. That's what that is based on all of the things that make us us. Right. So that's one of the things that we can um, kind of talk about. And then let's move on to the next one. Allyship. This is my favorite. <laughs> so allyship, noun or verb. What is the difference? What is the difference between an ally being a noun and a verb? Could, could somebody call on me? Could somebody call on me? Can somebody no. call on me? Oh, oh, thank you, Leo. I'll go. Uh, so, <laughs> so a noun is when you just like, like, that's it. I might, remember when we talked about like when people self proclaim themselves an ally, that's a noun. A verb means action right? Which means if I am the only black and brown person in the room and I am being um, torn down by facets of white supremacy and you are a white human and you say you're an ally, then you should be speaking up. You should be doing a somersault and a flip to make sure I feel supported and affirmed. And I shouldn't have to, I, I should not have to defend my identity, right? Because that's kind of what it is. That's the difference, a verb and a noun. Oh, yeah. What is it? OK, oh, it's a verb. All right, Alicia. <laughs> Share up. There's too much from 2020 that will that we all understand more fully that we must change things we can't unsee. Yep. You're right. Sherry, active. You have to be active. You have to be active. Now, when you look at it, is your pride event or maybe let's go personally. Are you actively an ally or are you a passive ally? Because, see, I'm going to be honest with you. And I sometimes I need people to take it to another level. I'm not looking for an ally. I'm looking for an accomplice. I need, like, a partner of crime right there with me, hand in hand. Like, if something go down, like, listen, this is about to go down. We, You you with me? Look, <laughs> we got this. We're in this march, right? Look, now, I'm black. You white. Now, you know, you heard about all these black, these protests around the white wall and all of that. And it's great when you're talking about it. But when you actually are being arrested, you got to have a strong resolve and we need to have a conversation about that. And if you're not down with it, I appreciate that. But let me know before we out here in these streets marching. <laughs> I need to know that. I need to know what I'm what I'm dealing with. Right. Um, I'm so laughing out at Alicia. Accomplice. All right, Edwin. Yes. Go. <laughs> I got the show. See, I ain't want to see that on the on the recorded line, Sherry. But yes. Look. <laughs> When we down, we down. There we go. Um, I'm so tired of people seeing a problem and then hoping it that it is someone someone gets it fixed rather than asking what they can do to fix it. If it's to be, it starts with me. Yeah! <laughs> I had to drop my pen on the one. I like that one. If it's to be, it starts with me. I like that, Sherry. I like, I like the, that. Uh, that's to, to to say to. Uh be the change you want to see in the world. That's right. If whenever That's I'm right. doing something weird and somebody's like, why do you have to do that? And I say, because be the change. There you go. That's why. If not me, then who? If now, when, then when? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. So listen, um, let's move on. I think we all, we're all confident in the difference between a verb and, an, and, and a noun when it comes to allyship. So this is a point. Um, if y'all have any questions or comments or y'all want to discuss anything else that maybe I didn't touch on, if you have any questions, feel free. I am, um, I'll still stay on here for another light and a fire. All right. <laughs> y'all, let's it. <funny. laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, I appreciate y'all for spending your hour and a little bit over with me. I do appreciate that. I know that um, having conversations is not like this is not always easy. And I appreciate you being vulnerable, you being open. 
And so that does not, oh, all right, Alan, I'm getting a snap. That does not, that does not fall lightly on me. So I appreciate that. And thank you for even allowing me to do it. This was such a great session. Thank you, everyone. Yes, it was, Alicia. Yes. We can get that, you, have some, you want to say something? We can make sure that um, you put the put in the link, Leo, so we can save this uh, the document. I, I, every session has had the same request for slides. So I think what we're going to do is, is <laughs> get everything organized so that it's successful to everybody afterwards. Oh, yeah. Try to take, take, take yeah, the slide, so, the slide so, presentation. So <laughs> give, us, give us a day That's fine. and we'll get it out there. But I would like to say that uh, I think we have to like expand uh, what think outside the box for allyship. Well, the work that I do for OutC Teams organization, I see that as I want I I build the stage to elevate the voice. I mm. I make the path to to put everyone through. That's that's how I'm an ally. I don't you know you don't need to hear what I have to say, but I get you there. <laughs> <laughs> I am an accomplice. Listen, and and he is right because let me tell y'all something. Uh, Whoo, child, when it comes to tech stuff, <laughs> Jamel Moss Savage, that's not me, honey. Lord have it. Uh, but I will we, not uh, you the, the two people that be holding me down, Edwin Abby is the vice president of OCT and also like my partner in crown when it comes to um, another program we do through the education committee. And Leo kind of had to get me all the way together and tell me about this webcam <laughs> chat and did, and did not pull any punches, y'all, okay? Leo was like, you need a consultation because it's a mess. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're a, no, you're just a, say what all you're gonna say, but but it's true. But I appreciate it because it made it made me better. So I appreciate that. Was, that. that so thank you all. Um, it seems like this has been great. I really enjoyed meeting you all. This has been awesome and interacting. Oh, thanks again, Donna, for letting me in. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> oh, great session. Love your energy and your accent. Thank you, Donna, Chad, because it's there. It is. It's not going anywhere. Wait till I get down south with my camp folk, Chad. Look, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You, it comes all the way out. My spouse will be like, girl, I didn't know. Are you speaking English? Yes, I am. Stop it. But anyway, so there we have it. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all. Thank y'all. See y'all later. Yeah, I'll see you all at the uh, one o'clock keynote. It's Tyler and Jackson. Jackson. All right. Bye. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. And I, I got so much. I, I regret being late, but the app does not work at all. It doesn't? It's, I, I haven't been able to access one session and I'm so looking forward to the slides that I missed and yeah, no disrespect. Totally. I, I'm so sorry that you weren't able to, Sherry. I do um, apologize. I will let, I will send Leo a text and let um, him know that the app is not working. And um, it's, yeah, I just did an update on the phone. So it's like as good as it's going to get, but okay. It, I feel really. Lindsay, Lindsay just said, "I heard." Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> I, I feel really connected to you, and I very much appreciate the work that we're all going to do together going forward. Oh, I'm excited about it too. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing, and and you having the shovel, honey. <laughs> Lisa is from Jersey. She, yeah, I got her back. It's all good. All right, bye. See you later. <laughs>